Hey guys, Chris here with Rooted. I'm really excited to talk to you today about kind of the notes that go beyond a modern chord chart. I hear all the time, hey, I see this chord chart for I am or whom shall I fear or oceans. And I'm seeing these chords that it's telling me to play, whether it's a six chord or a four chord or one chord. But the notes that I see you play or other people play in tutorial or on stage at church, they're not anywhere in the chord chart and I don't know what to do here. And so I hear that question all the time and I really wanted to come around that today because it ultimately starts addressing another topic that I wanna to talk to you about next week, which would be really amazing. I'll get to that in just a minute. But really what we wanna come around today is just understanding what a chord chart's purpose is and really what it can tell you about a song um, as opposed to even like a piece of sheet music. So let's just start with a piece of sheet music. That's something everybody is probably somewhat familiar with. Um, even if you don't know how to read music, you've probably seen it before. There's so many notes on a piece of sheet music, and that's a good thing. A piece of sheet music is designed to show you every single note that you wanna play in any given song. Now, like any piece of music that's on paper, uh, you really can't put everything from a song onto uh, a piece of sheet music. So if you were to pull up um, a Beethoven piece or Canon in D or whatever classical piece that you really love and you heard someone masterful really play it, it would sound a whole lot different than you trying to replicate it from a piece of sheet music because there's so much life and just breath that they bring into the song, like a really amazing player, right? Um, even though you're playing the same notes in the same key with the same rhythms, they might push and pull the tempo in a way that you just really don't know how to do, or they may rise and fall the dynamic of the piece in a really just amazing way that you wouldn't have known to do without, what you wouldn't have known to have done without hearing the piece. The same thing is true with a chord chart. People often miss the, this, this distinction, even in classical music and sheet music. They think, okay, whatever's on the page is exactly what I need to do, but this is not true. The way that a piece was meant to be played is even different than what's on the page. And the same thing is true then for a chord chart. Uh, what you see on a chord chart is far less than what you see in a piece of sheet music, but it still works the exact same way. If you were doing a lettered chord chart or a numbered chord chart, it's the same way. You might see a G or you might see a one or a D sus four or a five sus four, depending on what uh, you're doing, whether the letters or numbers. And the bottom line that, uh, that we have to get to today and that I want to get in your mind today is that no core chart is going to be able to give you the full picture of what you have to do in a song. And that may be overwhelming. You may be like, well, why in the world do we use these chord charts and why in the world do we use them at all? The point of a chord chart, whether it's numbers or letters, is to give you a layout, like a map of the song. And it's really your job to use your ear to listen to the specific chord inversion, to the specific notes, maybe melody notes that are played in between the chords or what's going on there for, for instance, like the rhythm or the dynamics, like is my left hand playing quarter notes here or are they doing octaves or am I playing up an octave to achieve a softer volume or am I really bringing home this chorus a progression here with a louder dynamic, you know, things like that. You have to be aware of, and you have to really listen and hone into what's actually happening in the piece. The chord chart, uh, for all intents and purposes, is just a layout of the song. It's, it's designed to help you know and navigate the piece of music section by section. It's not designed to show you every little thing that you need to do. And so then the work becomes thrown on you in order to grasp all those extra things that happen in a piece of music. And it's not just you all professional musicians deal with this exact same thing. If you ever have a chord chart, if you're ever following a chord chart, which are very common, as you know, in modern music, every professional musician is going to have to listen to that song and be able to know what they need to do outside of just the chord chart. There's no way you could put a chord chart up in front of any musician and have them immediately know, oh, this is the lead for that song, or these are the rhythms I wanna provide here. You know, the more that you get into playing worship music and pop music in general, the more you can kind of anticipate, oh, chorus two is going to be bigger than chorus one, so I want more rhythm and more dynamic. Or the bridge, typically we're going to go up another dynamic level to the bridge, or maybe we'll fall off. A down chorus is always going to feel kind of the same, right? So you kind of have some tendencies in music that you can follow just innately, but some of those little things like a lead line or a certain dynamic level or a certain rhythm that might you might not be aware of without hearing it, you're just not gonna be able to know without listening to the song. 
So the bottom line here today is that if you're following a core chart, you don't have to know everything that's going on. A core chart isn't gonna put everything that you need to do in a song in that core chart. So rest assured, you're not the only one who's thinking that, okay? All professional musicians have to actually listen to the song, learn it, and somewhat memorize what they're doing within the context of the layout of the core chart. Now, that information kind of sets the stage then for some ear training, okay? If you're not able to hear a chord and know what chord's being played or know what inversion is being played or know the rhythms or anything like that, that is the next piece of where I want to take you next week. It's going to be amazing. And to set the stage a little bit, I want to tell you about a couple students that I've taught to do this exact same thing. There's one student um, in particular who I started teaching him about four or five years ago, and I started a, a couple years back really showing him how to listen to a song, like a modern worship song or a pop song, and just be able to know exactly what number chord is being played immediately. So we would kind of spend some time together going through some of these songs, some of his favorite songs he was listening to at the time, maybe a song he really wanted to learn to play at church, and we'd kind of alongside each other go through it together and say, okay, all right, I, right now what I want you to do is tell me what you think this chord is, what number you think this is. And I'd say, okay, is this a one chord? Is this a four chord? Is this a five chord? Is this a major chord? Is this a minor chord? What are you hearing here? What's the distance between these two chords being played? And the more that we worked on it within four to six months, he was able to completely listen to a song chart it out, know exactly what chord was being played just like that instantly within four to six months. That's amazing. And that's the ear training that I want to take you guys through in the next several weeks. Now, obviously, it won't be able to be specific to you because this is video and it's a little bit of uh, less individualistic, but I'm going to show you the same techniques that I used with some of my other students to get them to the point where they are now, where now, if they want to learn a worship song, they don't have to go find a YouTube tutorial. How amazing is that? They can simply listen to a song, have a chord chart in about five to 10 minutes, and then they can start listening for the exact inversions, the exact rhythms, the melody lines being played, and they don't even need me anymore. <laughs> That's the amazing thing about this. Like these students that are learning to do this, they don't need an instructor to teach them how to play a song anymore. Like they got that stuff. They need an instructor or a coach like me for other things to help them continue progressing in other areas. But just to simply learn a song, like how amazing would that be just to be able to rely on yourself? Be incredible, right? That's what everybody wants to do, to be able to just, hey, I wanna to listen to a song, just know that I can play it. Like what an amazing accomplishment. Whenever people do that, anyone who's not super familiar with music, they kind of perk up and like, oh my goodness, that person must be amazing. And it really isn't even about how amazing of a player they are. It's about their training and their ear training and what they've gone through and the work that they've put in to really understand this stuff. So that's where we're heading in the next few weeks. So I hope that gets you excited. I want you to come back and get ready to go for that kind of stuff because it's gonna be really great. We're gonna take it in a few different pieces and break it up. So hopefully it makes more sense. And hopefully so these videos don't get too long because we could spend honestly, hours in one video talking about certain aspects of this just because it's so heady and it has to do so much with your knowledge but also with your ear and your ability to pick out certain things but what i'm going to try and do is break it down for you so it makes a lot of sense the bottom line for today though that i want you to remember is that a chord chart doesn't tell you everything about the song everybody is in the exact same position in terms of that boat all the chord chart does is gives you a map and a layout of the key but what it what you have to do on the back end of that is then listen for the chords, try and match where those chords are being played, either high or low on the piano, match the rhythms, match the melody lines and things like that. And so as you're practicing with a chord chart in front of you, just know that going into it and know you need to listen to a song a little bit more. And rest assured, it's not just you, everybody has to do the exact same thing, alrighty? And stay tuned for next week, get ready for next week, what's gonna happen, because we're gonna really get into some amazing ear training pieces. I'm excited to do that with you.